Hello, I will show you uh, a demonstration of the Babette R package. And to do so, uh, I go to uh, the Babette, uh, I load her from R Studio, I go to her Vignettes folder and I open up demo.r markdown. And here you can see the, the code that will be running. Uh, but uh, because it takes some time, I've already ran it for you. So here we see the same vignette as I just showed you. And it's going to de uh, to demonstrate how to use Babette for one alignment, two alignments, and two alignments with a fixed crown edge. The latter is novel, you can't do that in beauty easily yet. Alright, but first to use Babette, you need to load her, so uh, do library Babette, and uh, she's uh, loaded. Also for, these, uh, um, for this vignette, I'm going to run Beast 2, which uses an MCMC algorithm, and I'm not going to use a very long, uh, I'm not going to wait very long, so I'm going to use a very a too short MCMC chain, so I create an MCMC uh, option object, which has a chain length of 10,000, and this MCMC chain is stored, or measured its uh, parameter estimates every thousand uh, states. So it's rather short, uh, that's so that you can run it also rather fast. But you should never use this in a scientific publication. Uh, you, uh, you'll see. So for one alignment, uh, to run Beast 2 with all the default settings, but for um, uh, for a certain FASTA file using my MCMC object I just created, it's like this. So perhaps this may surprise you, get path. It gives you the path of the default supplied FASTA file called anthusaco.fas. It's in um, it's in the uh, Babette, you can find it in Babette, inst, ext data, and there the FASTA file is. Right, so you can just use this example FASTA file uh, using get path. It's uh, supplied for convenience. And this function run beast 2 creates a beast 2 input file like beauty does. It runs beast 2 and then parses the output to create a data structure called out. Out is a list that has three elements which are the parameter estimates which are um, all the posterior phylogenies and lay, uh, as last all the MCMC operator acceptances. Well uh, one thing that Tracer shows us and it's interesting to see is what are the parameter estimates in time. So I'm going to use uh, ggplot2 to plot here and in my out structure I got an element called estimates, how conveniently named. It's a data frame so I can use that for ggplot. And I want to plot on the x-axis the sample, which is uh, uh, the MCMC state, which starts at zero and every thousand steps up until 10,000 steps, like I did exactly here. And as a y value, I want to plot the tree height, so we just estimate the tree height, and uh, you can see that the tree height uh, declines a bit. And if I plot the likelihood of the Yule model. Then, I, then you see that it increases, which you would expect that an MCMC chain converges to a certain high likelihood. And also I can plot the birth rate, which is um, it, it's a part of the Yule model. You can see that it goes all up to here. Well, if we want to do some calculations, if we want to see how the effective sample size is, then usually you remove the burn-in. The burn-in is the first part of the MCMC run in which the algorithm has not reached convergence yet, has not reached equilibrium yet. So usually this is 10%, but for the sake of fun I'm going to use 20% burn-in removed, so I only keep the last 80% of all the samples. Which is still, too, like, but because the samples are too short, it's still nonsense in this case, but as a demo it will work. Well, to remove the burn-ins, you call a function called remove burn-ins. Uh, it needs, you need to specify what what to remove the burn-ins from, and you have to specify a fraction, a value between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1, to, uh, to remove. And I call the thing that's left the traces, so those are the clean parameter estimates, so to say. I can, I'm going to calculate the effective sample sizes from that, for that I need the traces. I need to know the sample interval. 
as well, but I specified it at the top here. Sample interval is a thousand. It's important, so you, it must be there. And then I get the effective sample sizes of all my parameter estimates. Here I do some that it looks nice. And here you can see my effective sample sizes. Those were all nine because there's no autocorrelation yet because it's too short and so on. Um, what Tracer does, so Tracer shows you these effective sample size, but it also gives you a lot of summary statistics. Well, the function calc summary stats, how, conv how, how brilliantly named, on those traces, uh, it gives you exactly the uh, summary statistics. So um, these are exactly the same values as Tracer will give. Of course, the MCMC run also shows you uh, there's another program called Density Tree that plots all the, the phylogenies that the MCMC run gave. So you can plot it using plot density tree. It's very similar to density tree, uh, but this one uses Fangorn in the back end, which is another R package. Uh, so you see it here. Um, so th this is all, f all things that. Uh, that Beauty does, that Beast 2 does, that Tracer does, and that Density Tree does. All right, now we're going to do the same, but now for two alignments, and it will be very similar. So instead of normally we always always used Run Beast 2 using an MCMC, uh, so these are the options of the MCMC run. But now instead of one file, one FASTA file, we use two FASTA files. And then it will start doing parameter estimations on both alignments separately. So they don't, they cannot have a shared clock model or a shared tree prior or a shared um, side model yet. But you can uh, you can run them. So for plotting, uh, we still plot the estimates that come out of the uh, the, the out structure. But now, if we want to plot the two tree heights, then the the, the it's called tree height dot echo and dot nd2 because we have an echo and an nd2 here. It's what um, I think it's what beauty or beast. I think it's what beast and tracer do by default. So that's why I follow the same architecture. All right. Also the Yule model. I plot both of them here and here. I plot the birth rates of both both of them. I also remove the burn-ins here. I calculate the effective sample sizes, and here we can see the effective sample size of the posterior, the shared posterior, the shared likelihood, the shared prior. But here we have different tree likelihoods because those are run uh, separately. The tree heights are run separately. Uh, clock rate is shared. The Yule model of both trees have the same effective sample size, and also each Yule model has its own birth rate. Apparently, ND2 gives more information about that, or is less autocorrelated. To plot those phylogenies, well, I'm just going to plot them one at a time. So now, instead of out dollar trees, it says Omphus echo underscore trees, and here below, surprisingly, Omphus underscore ND2. And so these are the two uh, two sets of phylogenies you get in the in the posteriors per alignment. Well, what's novel or what's very easily doable within Babette is that you can specify a fixed posterior crown age. So here we use two alignments again using our same MCMC options, but now we're going to set the we're going to fix the posterior crown age to 15. And now if we're going to plot the, uh, the uh, estimates as an x value we sample and as a y value we those tree heights that are uh, of two because they are unrelated we have, will have two um, sets of phylogenies. You can see that the first tree height is nicely fixed at 15 and the other sets of phylogenies it is like um, <coughs> it's like yeah it, it can change size um, it also within beauty it will change size I assume it's adapting uh, the second sets the second tree to the first ones but I'm not sure about that all right so we can also plot the, the yule model likelihood like we do here we can plot the birth rate like we do here 
we can remove the burn-ins like we do here and we can plot exactly the same effective sample sizes we can plot the phylogeny so this is the first phylogeny this is the the set of phylogenies with the fixed crown age you see that the, the crown age is fixed like all of them apparently have this well I know for sure they have the same crown age but you see that it looks rather different and if we take a look at the second set of trees then you see it looks sort of yeah like it's it's reacting to the fixed crown age here all right so that's uh, showcasing Babette what she can do uh, I think it's easy to use her so and um, enjoy using her